do this. Last week, we talked about battling for our minds or capturing our minds and thought. We, we, we discussed that we have to take care, uh, hold of our minds. And we started out with, with Philippians, the second chapter, the fifth verse. It says, have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. And then we just went from there. And so we're going to review a little bit. And then I'm going to finish up this, this sermon on capturing our minds. But first of all, before we start, can we go to the Lord in prayer? Lord, Father, we just love you and praise you, and I just ask your Holy Spirit to come now. Lead us and direct us in this, this time of fellowship, this time of worship, this time of, of instruction, this time of reading your word, Lord. I pray that you'll just touch our hearts and our minds, Lord. Let us understand what you have for each, each and every one of us, Lord that we will become the kind of followers and the kind of participants in your kingdom as you would have us to come. Lord, let us grab a hold of this, promises that you have for us and that we can take control of our minds, Lord. And I pray that you remove me from the service and speak through me only. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So we talked a little bit about capturing our mind. Then we went on and, and we looked in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verses 4 and 5. Are we getting that up there? No. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. And we, we looked at this verse and kind of broke it down just a little bit. Uh, it says, For the weapons of our war, uh, warfare are not of flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortress. We are destroying speculations and every lawfully thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And we kind of broke that down, and we said that when we talk about speculations, what were we talking about? Arguments, thoughts, ideas that come against God. And every lawfully thing, people that raise themselves up or something that put a block between you and God. And, and we see that in the world today. We see it in our, in, in our government trying to put a block up with this lawfully thought that we all have to be tolerant, except Christians, you, you're not tolerant. And we're not going to tolerate you. And so they're taking prayer out of schools. You can't, you know, they're trying to take Bibles out of the military. And they're, they're trying to stop prayer in public. <laughs> Why do I have to be so tolerant and you're not tolerant to me? Because they're having these lofty ideas, these, these understanding that they want to put the world on us. And who's in charge of worldly thoughts? Satan. Well, we got an enemy. And he's not a flesh. Oh, really? Yeah. He's spiritual. Do you know that Satan can talk to you and disguise himself as God? Yeah. He can talk to you and disguise himself as God. He did it to Eve, didn't he? He put some doubt in her mind. I don't know if you read our, our uh, I wrote a little bit about false prophets this week. On our Facebook. And sometimes we want something in the flesh so much. That we can almost hear God telling us that it's a, we're going to get it. It's not God sometimes, is it? It's Satan using your weakness. What is your weakness? Your flesh. Right? And so these are the things we're fighting against. But I'm going to tell you, our battle is not of the flesh only. Even though the flesh, they take advantage of our flesh, Satan takes advantage of our wants and our desires and our flesh, he used spiritual things against us. So he puts ideas in our, heart, our minds, right? Who was I talking to this week? We talked a little bit about that. You cannot satisfy the flesh. You can't satisfy it. Satan knows that. He's going to continue to, to go towards that. So that's kind of what it says. And they, they raise up things against God's knowledge. And it says we're to take captive and be obedient to God. We take captive of our minds. Well, it's amazing. I'm talking about this stuff. And to this week, I, had a, I faltered. I didn't take captive of my mind. I let something come out of my mouth that wasn't of God. Satan had got a hold of me, and I said something that I shouldn't say. Not cussing, but I confessed something or was in question of something. I was letting Satan take up, my house, taking up lodging in my mind, in my thinking. 
And he's telling us, we've got to stop that. We've got to take control of that, of our very thinking. Well, we went on and we found out that one of the things that happens is we come up with a, a doubtful mind, don't we? We start doubting. We see in Luke, the 12th chapter, 29th verses, and do not seek what you will eat or what you will drink, and do not keep worrying. In other words, he's taking care of us, doesn't he? And we've got to keep doubt from our mind. And that's actually kind of what happened to me today, uh, this week, is I had a little bit of doubt about some stuff. I let that get a hold of me. And when we have doubt, Satan, this is how we talked about it last week, how he takes, puts doubt in your mind. See, he's a liar, deceiver. He never tells the truth. And he'll take the very word of God and twist it just a little bit to put doubt in your mind. Remember what he did to Eve? Say, God had told her, don't eat for that, that tree or you'll die. Right? And what Satan say? You surely won't die. Just that. We're in that very calm not a lot. All he says, surely you won't die. And that's all it takes to put doubt in our mind. And so Satan wants us to doubt God. And so in order to take captive mind, we should never have a doubt in God. We should never have a doubt in God's word. We should never have a doubt in God's promises. We should never have a, a doubt in God's people. So how do we do this? We test the spirits, don't we? If someone prophesy something if someone says something you what are you supposed to do get in the word of god test that when somebody when the spirit speaks to you he's never going to give you something that outside the scripture never he, you know what else he'll never do he'll never give you something that is going to going to divide his church he won't do it now he may give you something to discipline or further, but he'll do it in a loving manner. So when you get these words that sometimes we think is from God, they're really just Satan trying to put a doubt in our mind or trying to change us a little bit. The other thing is sometimes we have a blinded mind. We get blinded. We find that in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In those cases, the God of this world was blinded in my minds of the unbelieving so that they might not see the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. See, again, blinded minds of all kinds of Satan's lies. He keeps bombarding us with lies, and we start getting blinded. We see this in colleges, I said. Remember when I talked about kids in college? They're telling them evolution's the way. God's not really alive. And they keep doing this. They're blinding us. They're throwing stuff on television that starts blinding us from the ethics and the morals of the Bible. You know, we don't even get frustrated about uh, uh, homosexuality on TV very much anymore, do we? Man, they're even kissing on TV. Man, they're blinding us. They're dulling us. And that's Satan. He's having his way with us. And what he wants to do is he wants you to accept his ways and not God's. And then our government's saying you can't speak out against homosexuality. Yes, I can. Because my God says I can. My God says I should. Not in an unloving manner. Listen, I love them. God loves them. God created them. God's got a plan for them. God wants them to come accept His Son as their Lord and Savior. God wants them to change their lifestyle. But I'm going to tell you, I cannot sit here and say, oh, well, you know, maybe they was born that way. No, the Bible doesn't say that. The same way as I can't accept somebody that's, that is uh, addicted to drugs. I haven't told this story, but I'm going to tell it. There was a guy that was part of this church a long time ago that said that sometimes he'll sit down and have a beer to drink to somebody to talk about gospel. The gospel. Ugh. And then he was asked, well, if they were shooting up heroin, would you just take a, a shot of that too so you can spread the gospel? See what I mean? 
And even when I say that, uh, drinking a beer to spread the gospel, I, uh, a scripture comes to mind that I could probably fight that with, but it'd be out of content. You know, I'm all things to all people. No, that's not what he, not he means. You follow me? He also, if you read on, says, not, you know, when Paul, because uh, Paul's getting on Peter about some stuff here. He said, listen, if you're with the Gentiles and they're eating, if, if it doesn't, if it's not against God, go ahead and eat with them. Okay? But he's not saying, destroy your witness in the process. Well, what's that doing? That's blinding us. They're trying to make us think it's okay. Does that make sense? Don't get mad at me, and don't say I'm saying you, uh, I'm not saying you can drink. I'm not saying it's just necessarily a, a sin to have a beer. But what I am saying, it's terrible for your witness. He says, don't do that. He also says, keep control of your mind. Don't let your mind. And so if you take alcohol and break it down in the Greek, you come up with like a psycho uh, is a is a derivative of the word. In other words, it means if you do anything, ingest anything that, 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 that changes your psychic or your mind or your, your facilities, you need to stay away from it. And he says, stay drunk in the spirit, not of this world. Does that make sense? And so what can I, is, is, it, is it sinful for me to have a beer? No. But is it profitable? No. But why? Because I'm destroying my witness. Why? Because God says, I want you to witness to people. Now, did God make drinking a sin? No. Did, did people make drinking a sin? Yeah, kind of in our, in our culture they have. They said, if you're a Christian, you can't drink. Well, okay, glory be to God, I just won't drink. Because your spirit is worth more to me than me having a drink. Does that make sense? So that's why we have to change. And God says, we got to change. This is not the sermon I had wrote down, but we're going to go there. What God wants you to do is, He wants you to come to Him. And He's going to promise to start a work in you. I, I have beat this to death. You all heard me say that before? He's going to start a work in you that He's going to complete until He returns. He's going to continue. Remember that? Do you believe that? Well, good, that means you believe in the Bible, every bit of it, right? So, do you just change overnight? Some people do. Paul did, didn't he? Man, he hit that dirt, went blinded. He didn't know what to do. Come here or sick him. He went to this guy. They removed the scales from his eyes, and Paul was totally changed, wasn't he? Now, I bet you money Paul didn't drink a lot. I bet he didn't cuss a lot. You know why? He was a devout Jew. You follow me? But what he did is he hated people that loved Jesus, and he changed overnight. Now, Peter, on the other hand, I think Peter probably let some cuss words fly. I don't know. Most of us can relate to Peter a little bit. Peter was a little out there, wasn't he? And something tells me if you read the life and story of, of Jesus and Peter together, Peter was changed over a time, wasn't he? You know, right up to the last minute, man, he's cutting people's ears off. Right? He changed over a time. Yeah, thank God. Yeah. He's still working on us, ain't he? Thank God. And you know what? He don't get tired of helping you either. He don't get tired of, 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 of trying to change you. Now, he'll keep testing you, won't he? Every day he'll allow. He don't test you. He allows things to test you. Okay, but he's there to help you up. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to do it till you get it right. Now, Chris, Chris understands this. Chris went three times to third grade in Louisiana. <laughs> they kept him there till he got it right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just cheesing. Some of us need it though. <laughs> I said I was just teasing. <laughs> but the devil wants to blind our mind. He wants us to accept things. Then there comes a time when our mind gets closed, didn't it? Where we close our mind. 2 Timothy 3, 7 says, Always learning and never able to acknowledge the truth. Always learning, but, but unable to acknowledge the truth. 
Some of you will spend years studying and not see the truth. I talked to a man just Friday who was active in the church. Man, he'd take up offerings. He was part of the church, served the church since he was young, seven, eight years old. He was in the church, serving the church over and over. And God talked to him when he was 47 years old and he'd come give God uh, his life, truly give his life to God. And listen, tell me, that man knew from that time to then. He knew the Bible. He had knowledge of the Bible. He knew what he was told. He heard the preacher over and over. He knew what was going on. And God touched him and said, hey, you're not saved. You got all this knowledge, but you ain't got the Spirit. And see, that happens in the churches today. We get too educational, too theological, that we want to turn off the Spirit. And the Bible says you can't understand the things of God without the Spirit of God. It won't make sense to you. That's why people say, well, I just don't understand that Christian stuff. Well, let me tell you, your first step is to accept Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross for you and I. Then you'll start kind of understanding. Another one is you've got to release yourself to have the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And then God can talk to you. Then he can start teaching you. Then he can start opening up the mysteries. Then he can start opening up your mind. Then he can help you take captive of your mind. Then he can start changing you. But if you're just coming to church to hear a preacher preach and some dudes sing, and you're not turning your life over to God, this is what they're talking about. You're just capturing knowledge. And you have no way to put that knowledge into action. Because the flesh can't understand the spiritual. Okay? And so until you accept Jesus Christ, until you get that infilling of the Holy Spirit to you, start walking with Him and craving Him, it's just knowledge. And your mind starts to close because it can't be expanded because you don't have the tools. The tools to understand the things of God is spiritual. It's spiritual. It's not book learning. It's spiritual. Don't get me wrong. The, the Bible is the foundation of all of it. But it's spiritual. Then we talk.